Hello and welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Serena and in today's video we're going to be sewing up a Pyrex Pink Daisy inspired toaster cover. This is a very simple and easy craft to do and I'll be going into detail on how to do it. I won't be using a pattern because I made it so I'll have that pattern available for you on my Patreon if you are a bobbin over there or you can join and um, I'll just tell you how you can make a pattern of your own in this video. Last week I released two videos. I did a live stream and then I did my Betty dress by Gertie's Charmed Patterns. So I wanted to do something very simple and quick and easy and also a scrap busting project. So today we're going to be making a toaster cover. Yes, an old school toaster or appliance cover that you would have seen at your grandmother's house. I'm going to make one here today because I am going to be relocating my toaster from outside of a cabinet to on top of our new or new to me vintage refrigerator and I want it to blend in with the kitchen so I need to cover it because it doesn't match the color of my kitchen and I don't want to replace the toaster because it works perfectly fine. So if you're interested in how I made this toaster cover and if you'd like to make one yourself go ahead and like, subscribe, Follow me on Instagram at Serena underscore. And if you'd like to support this channel any further, you can leave me a virtual tip on Ko-fi or you could become a member of my Patreon. You can become a bobbin today and you'll get access to the file that I use to make the decal for my toaster cover, as well as the pattern that I use for my toaster, just in case you have the same toaster. So without further ado, let's get into the video. To make your pattern, you're gonna need two measurements. So I start off by laying my toaster flat to get the side measurements. I'm gonna trace all the way around the toaster and then I'm going to add an inch and a half seam allowance and ease. An inch is for the ease and a half inch is for the seam allowance. And then I'm going to flip the toaster back right side up to get the measurements for the center piece. For my center, the width is going to be nine inches and that will give me enough ease and seam allowance so it fits comfortably over the knobs. For the length, it doesn't really matter because you can just cut one really long strip and then cut off all the extra after it's sewn, but I could use 25 inches long for this and be okay for a perfect fit. Starting with some scrap fabric from last summer, I am cutting out the lining and I'm doing this on the fold. I'm cutting two on the fold and two on the main for the front and back of the toaster cover. Now I am measuring and drawing a line across the width of the fabric and I'm making sure that this is nine inches wide so that way there is more than enough ease for the cover to fit over the toaster without being too snug. Last, I cut out everything on my scrap quilted cotton from last winter's suit and I'll leave a card for that video above. And I wanted to add a little bit of extra to this and use up some more scrap. So I found some scrap piping in my closet. I don't have enough for it to go all the way to the bottom. So I did try to leave the seam allowance without any of the piping, but I still came up short. And that's okay because I can always add some trim later on because as you can see I have lots of scraps whether it be fabric or trim so the next time I get some cute white trim I'll use it for the bottom of this toaster cover to cover up the raw edges of the piping. I am using an adjustable zipper foot to attach my piping but if you want you can also use a cording foot to do this as well. Don't forget to clip your corners and it'll help you pivot and maneuver around those corners smoothly. This is a very easy project. I actually drew up the pattern the morning of this project and then I had it done by noon. It's a great beginner project. It's a quick one if you are experienced as well. I don't know how many people have my toaster, but it is a pretty popular style toaster, especially if you're into retro things. It's inexpensive and popular. So I will have the pattern on my Patreon if you're interested in using my pattern. Also available on Patreon will be the decals that I made for this toaster cover since I really enjoy the Pyrex dishes but I can't really afford to start a collection, I found a really cool and easy, inexpensive way to still have the Pyrex look without having to break the bank. 
So if you're interested in those decals, you can also sign up for my Patreon to get this print as well as the Spring Blossom print and the Corning Wear Cornflower design. So go head over to my Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Now I am sewing that long nine inch wide rectangle to the rounded side pieces. Now full disclosure, in the nature of using scrap, my fabric wasn't wide enough for it to be nine inches. I should have pieced this together, but I didn't want any more seams, so I settled for about eight inches. This made the cover a little bit snug over the toaster, but it fits nonetheless. Using nine inches with a half inch seam allowance will be perfect for the future. Since there are knobs at the front of the toaster, you do have to account for the space that that takes up. Now I won't give exact measurements for how long this strip should be because if you sew this on, you can always trim the extra. You would rather have more than less. I really enjoyed making this project, especially since it's been in a break between two apparel projects. It was nice to start something relatively early in the morning and being done by noon. It is my version of the walk away dress, but actually quick to sew and no extreme amounts of bias tape, but you still don't have to hem because it's completely lined. I shared with my patrons how I like to have hidden appliances, especially for my modern appliances. And in this case, I have a red toaster that does not go with my kitchen. And I am not a fan of replacing appliances just because it's not aesthetically pleasing. Instead, I don't mind putting it inside of a cabinet, or in this case, I want to get my cabinet space back and so I'm making a retro styled cover so that way it's covered stays in theme and I get more cabinet space now it's time to start working on the decal and I bring out my cutting machine and some scrap vinyl because this is a scrap project we are busting scrap right now and now I am going to press that vinyl with my little mini iron with a lot of pressure, which I don't recommend using a regular ironing board for this, but this is what I had. So I am putting counter pressure on it with the other hand while I push with my right hand. And I'm just gonna keep pressing until that vinyl is nicely transferred to my fabric. And I think this is so cute, especially with the new season of Marvelous Miss Maisel, the last season of Marvelous Miss Maisel. I think this is a super fun project and it would make a great gift for someone who really likes the series. Now I am sewing on that last side and we almost have a completed toaster cover. I also think this project is really fun for someone who is renting who may not have a lot of control over full renovations to their kitchen if they want a retro themed kitchen or just someone who doesn't have a flourishing Facebook marketplace for them to get a lot of vintage purchases. I think what makes old kitchens have that old vibe is the little details and a lot of vintage kitchens had covered appliances even though the appliances were cute so they had these cute little handmade and hand detailed elements to their kitchen and I think if you want to have that inexpensive way of kind of aging your kitchen in a very cute cozy way making something like this would help drastically. We finally removed our modern microwave and put in a vintage fridge. So we had a gap between the cabinet and where the microwave used to be. So I needed a way to fill that gap. So I decided to take the toaster out of the cabinet and set it on top of the refrigerator to fill that space. So now it's time to take the lining and put it right sides together with the outer shell of the toaster cover. You could have used a vinyl for this so that way you can easily wipe out the inside, but doing it this way makes it completely machine washable and dryable. Um, I did have to put in like a small little pleat to the lining because the lining was at the right dimensions. But as I said earlier, I did not have enough of the quilted fabric to make it nine inches wide. So instead of taking the lining apart or adding another stitch, I just made a quick pleat. Another thing I was thinking about when I was making this is if you do have the fabric to make it perfect, this could also be a reversible toaster cover. So you could very well use a different color and a different Pyrex decal on the other side and you could get two different style pieces or like the mixing bowl, how they have the inverse of each other. You could do that on the inside. 
So here's the final look and I'm so happy with it. It fills the space and covers that red toaster. Thank you so much for watching. Follow all of my socials, they'll be linked below. Don't forget to like this video and I'll see you in the next one.